Colorado is headed to the Big 12, and this is just about as official as it gets. They were unanimously voted in last night. And good for the Big 12, good for Colorado. A lot is going to be made of, of the Big 12 landing, you know, a top 20 media market with Denver and, and expanding their reach out west and Coach Prime being a brand of his own and, and what Colorado is right now and how intriguing they are. But as, as nice of an ad as this is for Big 12 and all the Big 12 fan base, like, this is a great thing for them. For Colorado, though, this was a matter of survival. And I cannot commend the administration at Colorado enough because they saw the boat that is the Pac-12 starting to take on water. And when USC and UCLA jump ship is when you kind of saw a couple of holes in the ship that was the Pac-12. But credit Colorado, they didn't wait around and say, hmm, I wonder if this thing's going to sink. Having trouble getting a TV deal done is the Pac-12. We're, we're sounding like it's going to be after this coming season when they'll finally hopefully get something done and Colorado's like you know what we're not going to stick around and see what Oregon does stick around and see what Washington does we've got an option here with the big 12 we're going to jump we're going to take it we've got some leverage right now we're, we're a brand like I said that's gathering a lot of intrigue currently we're jumping back to the big 12 conference baby let's make it happen and for for where Colorado is right now this whole deal of the conference expansion thing and the conference realignment thing, it's about relevancy. Like the SEC and the Big Ten, locked and loaded, they're going to be relevant. The Big 12 right now, trying to keep pace, did a nice job adding Colorado, but think about the teams that are still in the Pac-12 right now. What happens to Washington State? What happens to Oregon State? I think they're at the mercy of what Oregon and Washington do. And Colorado, again, to their credit, decided, no, we're not going to be at Oregon's mercy. We're not going to be at Washington's mercy. We're going to decide for ourselves where we want to be. Let's make it happen, baby. Let's, let's go continue to play at a top conference in college football. It's not the SEC. It's not the Big Ten, but it's the Big 12, and they're going to continue to expanding. So we'll talk more about who they're going to add here in the near future. But let's talk about this just from a football standpoint. Like, conference expansion is cool, and it just... I think even further proves the point that we need college football back on our TV screens here sooner rather than later. But let's just talk about it from a Saturday perspective. I think for Colorado, the first thing you think about is, okay, from a recruiting standpoint now, your reach becomes a little bit more expanded, for lack of a better term. Because Colorado now, you can go into those homes in Texas and be able to confidently tell these kids, hey, you're going to be able to come play at a Power 5 conference, or power, whatever it ends up being, power three, power four, however many power conferences we have, you're probably going to be in the upper tier of relevance there. And also, you're going to have a lot of games in your home state of Texas. We're going to play TCU. We're going to play Baylor. We're going to play Texas Tech. So you can still get away from home and have the college experience you want to have and kind of get out of your comfort zone. But rest assured, we're coming right back to the Lone Star State. We're going to play a lot of games in front of your friends and family. You can kind of make the same pitch, too, in the state of Florida. I mean, UCF is in the conference. Coach Prime, he's from Florida as long as he's at Colorado. Have a hard time believing they're not going to have a little bit of something to say in the Sunshine State. And here's the bigger thing, too, when it comes to their, their reach and, and their you know recruiting status. You're going to be able to tell these kids confidently. When you play a football game, there is a 0% chance that our broadcast with ESPN and Fox gets cut short because you got a Golden Girls rerun right up against it. You can't say the same for the Pac-12 right now. If you're in the Pac-12, you might have to tell these kids, hey, go down the street, find the nearest gas station, fill up some gas, and on that TV screen on the pump, you may be able to catch a Pac-12 football game. Like, come on now. I know that's a little bit tongue-in-cheek saying that, but we all understand being able to have your family and friends watch you on a national television broadcast, that means something. It means something to these kids. They grew up watching games on Fox, grew up watching games on ESPN. And Colorado now being with the Big 12, that's going to, I think, help their case with a visibility standpoint and being able to tell these families and these friends, yeah, go and watch me turn on ESPN, turn on Fox. You don't have to worry about getting the CW or whoever ends up grabbing the Pac-12. So with that being said, as it pertains to the Big 12, they're not done adding teams. We all understand that. I mean, Colorado got a, a great setup in the sense that they got to leave the Pac-12, no exit fee, still get to cash in a good $31 million, I believe, from the Big 12 when they arrive. But the Big 12 is at 13 teams. It's an odd number. Common sense would tell you they want to have 14 
if not 16. And the schools that keep getting brought up as a target for the Big 12 are those corner schools, the Arizona States, the Arizona, Utah. You would imagine those are probably at the top of the wish list for the Big 12 Conference to continue to add to their West Coast reach long term. If they were to add one more school before 2024 and sit at 14, Pete Thamel's article, who actually broke this news, by the way, at ESPN, Pete Thamel's article mentioned it could be beneficial for Colorado, or not for Colorado, I guess Colorado in general, it could be beneficial for the Big 12 to sit tight and see what happens in the ACC. Because the Big 12 now, they have been on offense. I mean, Brett Yormark comes from the entertainment business. He's like, I am adding brands. I'm going to have a product in the Big 12 that will be competitive. The ACC now, a little bit of, I don't know if movement's the right word, but there's some unrest there with what Florida State essentially said this past spring, saying, listen, we bring in a lot of money to this conference. We don't get nearly as big a piece of the pie as we should, as we expect to. I feel like that's a warning shot. Has to be a warning shot if you're the ACC. So I think if you're the Big 12 and you have a chance to land a Florida State and potentially a Clemson, if the ACC were start to come apart at the seams, like, okay, at that point then, you start to look at the Big 12 in a different light if you add those two powers. So for the Big 12... I think adding one of those corner schools before 2024 is ideal, and then you sit tight and see what happens with the ACC. Now, for the for the Pac-12, uh, it's, this is not the last team they're going to lose, in my humble opinion. I mean, Oregon, if you look behind yourself and you're Oregon, you see, okay, we're carrying a lot of the weight in this conference from a TV standpoint, from a revenue standpoint. Do we really want to tie ourselves to a conference that's going to have Washington State and Oregon State? There's no more USC and UCLA. There's no more Colorado market. Like, are we sure we want to stick around here and continue to pay rent for everybody else in this conference? Or if you have a chance to collect millions of more dollars and go to the Big Ten or go to, shoot, maybe the Big 12, who knows where they head. But I think Oregon and Washington have to be the next dominoes that you look at falling within the Pac-12 conference. And they're, they're very much unstable right now. One of the big reasons Colorado left because of their stability. So for the Pac-12, you hear teams like San Diego State get brought up. You hear teams like SMU get brought up. You hear teams like UNLV and Colorado State. Like to me, the Pac-12, I think, is very much so in danger of drifting into the background of relevancy and looking a lot more like a Mountain West conference than a Power Five conference that they have been historically. So you don't love it if you're a Pac-12 fan, but that's just the reality. It is a game of musical chairs. And the music started when Oklahoma and Texas said we're going to the SEC. They got their chairs in a Power 5 conference or in a Power whatever conference you want to call it. And then USC and UCLA. Music's still playing. They get their chair in the Big 10 conference. Good for Colorado saying we're sitting down before the music stops. We're going to find a chair in the Big 12 conference. And right now the Pac-12 and a lot of teams in the Pac-12 are sort of circling all the chairs. And I'll tell you what, man. I don't think there's going to be nearly enough chairs for everybody in that conference and for the Pac-12 as a whole to be able to stay in this game how they have stayed in the game in the past. So for Oregon and Washington, those are the next two I would watch for the Pac-12. I don't think these tectonic plates are done shifting. In fact, I guarantee they're not done shifting. We'll see if it happens before the season. But before 2024, I can almost guarantee that there will be another team joining the Big 12 conference and if the Big 12 has their way, it'll be one of those corner schools. So we'll see what happens there. But again, Colorado is headed to the Big 12 Conference Coach Prime and Company. Going to join a conference that is on the cutting edge of expansion. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch those games in the Big 12, man. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.